Hey everybody, it's Lo, and welcome back to my channel, Lo About Limits. In this video, I'm gonna share with you diet and lifestyle tips to build a healthy brain. So if you wanna see that, then just keep watching. Brain health is so important and age-related diseases are shown to start in the brain earlier than they actually appear, like decades earlier. So if you're worried about age-related brain diseases in your 70s and 80s, the time to start acting and preventing that is sooner rather than later. And as soon as you can start, even better. This is something that I've been diving into a lot more after reading Deep Nutrition and just learning so much about brain inflammation. Like half of my latest Google searches are all about reducing brain inflammation, things that you can do. As I also do more research with narcolepsy, this is something that I've become more invested in because having narcolepsy and also taking my medication, it does put me at a higher risk for developing these age related brain diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. So I want to prevent that as much as I can and take the action steps now. And having a healthy brain and having a good diet and good lifestyle factors for your brain does also correlate to a healthy body. So if you want to have a healthy body, look great, feel great, by focusing on your brain, everything else will fall into place as well. So I'm going to share with you different diet tips as well as different lifestyle tips to incorporate into your life in order to have the healthiest brain. So let's start off with food. So one thing that I really learned in deep nutrition is all about bad fats and healthy fats. So fats are super good for you. Your brain is a lot of fat that's made up in, up in there. And your brain also uses a lot of the calories that you consume. So your brain needs so much and having good fats is what's most important. And a lot of things that are in our diet and especially processed foods when you eat out are really bad fats that become essentially toxic to our body. And they're really bad by producing a bunch of inflammation in your gut, in your arteries, which is how I originally learned about these bad oils and bad fats, is how bad they were for your arteries and for your heart health, but that also is the same for your gut and for your brain. So these bad fats are things like fake butter, margarine, I can't believe it's not butter, it's not butter. Canola oil, vegetable oil, a lot of things like that, and especially eating a lot of fried foods, especially when you go out. So air frying your own things or frying some things at your own home, that's different than going out and getting french fries because a lot of studies have actually shown that these oils that are in these fryers at fast food restaurants and even at nicer restaurants too aren't getting switched out every couple days like they should before they go rancid. They're being used for seven, eight, even t more than 10 days at a time because it's cheaper for the restaurant to do that instead of buying new oils to fry everything with. So one, it's not a great oil to start with. It's typically vegetable or canola oil because that's cheaper. And then because it's being used and heated up and just reused over and over and over again, it's pretty toxic by the time it's getting all over your food and then into your stomach. So by cutting out those bad fats and replacing them with good healthy fats and oils like real butter, coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil, things like that are really, really important to have a healthy brain and a healthy body. So of course that's easier to do when you're cooking for yourself and focusing on a whole foods diet at home than it is going to a restaurant and you're not fully sure what they're making and even asking a waiter they might not be sure of what they're making in the kitchen or how old that oil is so it's definitely easier to do that while cooking for yourself and just trying to be more mindful about what you're eating when you are going out so if you are going out staying away from the french fries and all the fried food just to avoid those toxic oils that could be all over the food because all those toxic oils lead to a lot of brain related diseases and just a lot of brain inflammation, which is just not good, and you're just full body inflammation. So again, I learned a lot of that in deep nutrition. If you want like a deep nutrition for dummies video, let me know in the comments below. I really, really enjoyed that book, but it was also super dense and a lot to read. So if you want just kind of my quick take on that, definitely let me know. I'll also be sharing more of what I learned from that on my Instagram, below without limits. So that is it in terms of bad fats and cutting that out but things to add in because it's always easier to think about adding things into your diet than what you have to cut out like french fries. So to add things in, again, more healthy fats, those avocado oils, olive oils, coconut oils, and avocados themselves, as well as fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, 
tuna sardines if you like them. I haven't figured out a way to enjoy them. Maybe I'll figure out one way. If you have a good way to enjoy sardines, let me know. But good fatty fish and getting the fatty fish directly from the fish themselves versus from a fish oil supplement. I do take a fish oil supplement, but studies have been coming out showing that they're not as good as you may think. So you still are getting some of the omega-3s, which are super important to have and to balance out the omega-3s and omega-6s in our diet. But because the fish oil supplements aren't super shelf stable, so if they're exposed to a lot of heat, a lot of light, different things can actually make the fish oil itself go rancid. So by the time you actually get to taking the fish oil pill in the morning, it might not be good just from the entire process of making and getting it to you and having it sit in your cabinet until you get to taking it. So definitely getting the fish oil and those omega-3s from the source, from those fatty fish, the salmon, the mackerel, the tuna, the sardines is so much better than taking the supplement but of course if that's hard for you to do and you do want to get a little bit more the supplement isn't hurting at all but there are just better ways to get that into your diet through the actual food and getting it directly from the source but if a supplement is all you really can take at this moment then don't not take it. It's definitely better than nothing, but of course eating and getting all your nutrition and all of your omega-3s and everything from the whole foods themselves is so much better. Other foods that are anti-inflammatory and also full of antioxidants, so having anti-inflammatory foods and antioxidant foods are really good for your brain because you don't want to inflame brain and it's a lot of the oxidative stress that causes a lot of plaque buildup in your brain. So foods to help with that, again, like I said, avocados as well as different nuts. So almonds and walnuts are really, really good as well as chia seeds, dark leafy greens, so spinach, collard greens, all that good stuff, as well as green tea and coffee. So if you like your coffee, that's very good. Of course, adding in a bunch of sugars and creamers with funky words and weird added sugars isn't good, so black coffee is ideal. So if you like your coffee black, it's good for your brain. So there you have it. Now you have an excuse to drink even more coffee. And again, cutting out all of the bad oils, those bad fats, all the fake stuff that will just turn into all these long chain fatty acids and just wreak havoc on your entire body, especially your brain, as well as different added sugars. So those are super easy to avoid. Again, if you're focusing on a whole foods diet and you're cutting out just processed food, junk food, things that are overly processed because everything is processed in a way like to get an apple from the tree, it goes through a process of getting to the grocery store and getting to you. But when something that doesn't look like a real food, it's in a package, it has a label and some of the things don't even make sense or some of the things are different words for sugar, then try to cut those out as best as you can. We're not all going to be perfect all the time. I feel like that's ridiculous to assume so when we're also living life, but doing as best as you can is super, super important. Now in terms of lifestyle changes, so that's just diet, but going into just general lifestyle changes that are really good for your brain and in turn your entire body, the most important one is sleep. So I have a whole video on how to get the best sleep that I will leave linked down below, but definitely cutting out on the blue light at night, turning to blue light blocking glasses. I love mine from Blue Blocks. Just having good sleep and getting in a good circadian rhythm, exposing your eyes to daylight during the day, preferably outside, so that way the glass isn't cutting out any of those lights. And also having a lower stress level, so I know that we're all a little extra stressed at these times, but by lowering your stress level is super important to just lowering the stress in your brain and getting your body out of fight or fight or flight mode because when you're constantly stressed and you're constantly in fight or flight, your body can't work on repairing itself and healing itself because it's so busy thinking about this stress and this threat. And you can do so through meditation. So meditation has proven to be super beneficial for the brain and just by exercising as well. And a good way to do so is to get outside and just take a walk. By doing so, you're exposing your eyes to the light, you're adjusting your circadian rhythm. You can use it as a nice meditative state and just reduce your stress and be out in nature. So even just a walk for your brain health is super, super good. And lastly, getting some exercise so you don't have to go to the gym every single day 
for an hour a day and just lift heavy, go crazy. You don't need to do that for your brain health, but also do a little bit more than just excessive running. So the best thing is anaerobic exercise and it's actually been shown in studies that you don't need a ton. Just like in deep nutrition, she says just like 30 minutes a week, which you can do in 10 minutes a day, which I think is not a whole lot, but if that's the minimum and that's all you can do, then definitely stick to that. I think about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes a day, a few times a week, like three to four days a week is definitely a lot for your body health and for your brain health. And again, you don't need to be going crazy. Just get your heart rate up and get your blood flowing and get your brain working. And I personally find that when I do exercise and I am really consistent with exercising, even on days that I don't work out, knowing that I'm consistent and I'm going to go tomorrow and I have my workout plan for tomorrow and during the week, but today's just an off day. Just being in a good exercise routine and moving my body and getting my heart rate up has definitely helped me focus so I can, I just work better throughout the week when I have a good exercise routine that I'm taking part in. So just by having a routine moving, it makes your brain so much sharper, even during the middle of a work day, if you're just, you can't focus anymore, even staring at your screen, you need to think, take a 10 minute walk again you'll be getting your blood moving you'll be removing yourself from that light and that stress de-stressing and you'll be able to get back to work in a more focused state so by exercising you're helping your brain and again helping your body well those are the simple tips to a better diet and healthy habits to build a better brain we all again all can't be perfect all the time but doing as best as you can moving a little bit at least every a little every day at least a few times a week cutting out those bad toxic oils reducing sugar and just eating whole foods as well as reducing your stress through a little bit of meditation and just stepping away from the screens and getting good sleep as well all super great and super easy simple inexpensive tips for your brain and to have a good brain because there's no point in being 80 years old and in shape and fit and healthy if you don't have a good healthy brain to enjoy your life so i'm definitely taking in all these steps i eat as best as i can and i'm doing these lifestyle habits so we'll see how it works out when i'm 80 definitely follow up with me in a few years to see how my brains turned out well if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below of what your better brain health tips are and what you want to see more of on my channel and while you're there be sure to subscribe i upload a new video every wednesday so until the next one thanks for watching